Cancer is a creepy and mysterious thing. In the process of trying to understand it, to get better at killing it, we discovered a biological paradox that remains unsolved to this day. Large animals seem to be immune to cancer, which doesn't make any sense. The bigger a being, the more cancer it should have. To understand why, we first need to take a look at the nature of cancer itself. Our cells are protein robots made out of hundreds of millions of parts. Guided only by chemical reactions, they create and dismantle structures, sustain a metabolism to gain energy, or make almost perfect copies of themselves. We call these complex chemical reactions pathways. They are biochemical networks upon networks, intertwined and stacked on top of each other. Most of them can barely be comprehended by a single human mind. And yet they function perfectly until they don't. With billions of trillions of reactions happening in thousands of networks over many years. The question is not if something will go wrong, but when. Tinny mistakes add up until the grandiose machinery gets corrupted. To prevent this from getting out of hand, our cells have kill switches that make them commit suicide. But these kill switches are not infallible. If they fail, a cell can turn into a cancer cell. Most of them are slain by the immune system very quickly. But this is a numbers game. Given enough time, a cell will accrue enough mistakes, slip by unnoticed, and begin making more of itself. All animals have to deal with this problem. In general, the cells of different animals are the same size. The cells of a mouse aren't is smaller than yours. It just has fewer cells in total and a shorter lifespan. Fewer cells and a short life means a lower chance of things going wrong or cells mutating. Or at least it should mean that. Humans live about 50 times longer and have 1,000 times more cells than mice. Yet the rate of cancer is basically the same in humans and in mice. Even wader blue whales with about 3,000 times more cells than humans don't seem to get cancer at all, really. This is Petot's paradox, the baffling realization that large animals have much, much less cancer than they should. Scientists think there are, are two main ways of explaining the paradox, evolution and hypertumors. Solution 1, evolve or become a blob of cancer. As multicellular beings developed 600 million years ago, animals became bigger and bigger, Animal, which added more and more cells and hence more and more chances that cells could be corrupted. So the collective had to invest in better and better cancer defenses. The ones that did not die out. But cancer doesn't just happen. It's a process that involves many individual mistakes and mutations in several specific genes within the same cell. These genes are called proto-oncogenes, and when they mutate, it's bad news. For example, with the right mutation, a cell will lose its ability to kill itself. Another mutation, and it will develop the ability to hide. Another, and it will send out calls for resources. Another one, and it will multiply quickly. These oncogenes have an antagonist, though, two more suppressor genes. They prevent these critical mutations from happening, or order the cell to kill itself, if they decide it's beyond repair. It turns out that large animals have an increased number of them. Because of this, elephant cells require more mutations than mice cells to develop a tumor. They are not immune, but more resilient. This adaption probably comes with a cost in some form, but researchers still aren't, Sure, what it is. Maybe two more suppressors make elephants age quicker later in life or slow down how quickly injuries heal. We don't know yet. The solution to the paradox may actually be something different. Hypertumors. Solution to hypertumors. Yes, really. Hypertumors are named after hyperparasites, 
the parasites of parasites. Hypertumors are the tumors of tumors. Cancer can be thought of as a breakdown in cooperation. Normally, cells work together to form structures like organs, tissue or elements of the immune system. Cancer cells are selfish and only work for their own short-term benefit. If they re-successful, they form tumors, huge cancer collectives that can be very hard to kill. Making a tumor is hard work, though. Millions or billions of cancer cells multiply rapidly, which requires a lot of resources and energy. The amount of nutrients they can steal from the body becomes the limiting factor for growth. So the tumor cells trick the body to build new blood vessels directly to the tumor too, feed the thing killing it. And here, the nature of cancer cells may become their own undoing. Cancer cells are inherently unstable, and so they can continue to mutate, some of them, faster than their bodies. If they do this for a while at some point, one off the copies of the copies of the original, cancer cell might suddenly think of itself as an individual again and stop cooperating. Which means just like the body, the original tumor suddenly becomes an enemy fighting for the same scarce nutrients and resources. So the newly mutated cells can create a hypertumor. Instead of helping, they cut off the blood supply to their former bodies, which will starve and kill the original cancer cells. Cancer is killing cancer. This process can repeat over and over. And this may prevent cancer from becoming a problem for a large organism. It is possible that large animals have more of these hypertumors than we realize. They might just not become big enough to notice. Which makes sense. A 2 gram tumor is 10 of a mouse's body weight, while it's less than 0.2 of a human, and 0.2 of a blue whale. All three tumors require the same number of cell divisions and have the same number of cells. So an old blue whale might be filled with tiny cancers and just not care. There are other proposed solutions to Pitot's paradox, such as different metabolic rates or different cellular architecture. But right now we just don't know. Scientists are working on the problem, figuring out how large animals are so resilient to one of the most deadly diseases we know could open the path to new therapies and treatments. Cancer has always been a challenge. Today, we are finally beginning to understand it, and by doing so, one day we might finally overcome it. This video was sponsored by you. If you want to help us make more, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon or getting one of the beautiful things we've made, like our Space Explorer notebook with infographic pages and unique grids to inspire your creativity, or an infographic poster bundle, or the very comfy Kurzgesagt hoodie. Or, if you missed it the first time, the second run of our gratitude journal. We put a lot of time and love into our merch, because, just like with our videos, we only uh, want to put things into the world that we feel good about. Kurzgesagt is a project that by rights, shouldn't really work. Videos like the one you just watched take months to finish, and we re only able to put in so much time because of your direct support, because you watch and share, and because you, because, care. Thank you for watching. See you next time.